Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Our guest today is Mark Hauk. Uh, we're going to be exploring a little bit about uh, what has happened since uh, his re arrest and acquittal for the event that happened at the at the uh, Plant Parenthood building. And we're going to talk story more about his life and, and his ministry of the Kingsmen. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife Cindy says I should always start uh, our our show off with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian, so we will do that. Meka inoa o ka makua ke keiki a me ke uhana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. You know, um, in one of my books, Deep Adventure Way, Way of Heroic Virtue, I talk about the Christeros. Uh, when I was a young man in my, I think it was just my early 20s, I was leading, I played the guitar, you know, kind of the hippie days, and we led the worship at a Catholic charismatic uh, prayer group down in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And it was, uh, we, it was the church was just packed. And over half the people there were uh, Mexicano, uh, Hispanics. And, uh, and so they would, at the end of the service, at the end of our prayer meeting, they would shout out, Viva Cristo Rey! And I was like, what is that? And they kind of explained it to me. But now I've, I, I understand it more deeply. It was about 100 years ago when the socialists started to take over of, of Mexico. They began to persecute uh, the church. They, they, they killed the priests. They rode their horses right into the sanctuary, knocked over the, the, uh, the sacrament, the Eucharist. And there were many martyrs. And so Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King, uh, became, their, became their, their cry. And it's interesting because I think it's really become the, the, the cry of the Catholic men's movement. I know when I was with Father Mark Goring at his parish and when he was in Houston, where he was the assistant pastor, at the end of their service, which was so powerful, by the way, they shouted out, Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. And whenever I go speak at men's conferences, uh, I'll have the men stand up, and they love shouting that out. When you have a thousand men shouting out, Viva Cristo Rey, it's just so powerful. And I think, you know, people think, well, we would never have that. That could never happen, that, you know, where the government would oppress us and force us to do things that we don't want to do, like maybe uh, stay indoors for two years years or or force us to, to take vaccines maybe we do or do not want but um but the the, the heaviness of the persecution the fbi sending in um uh, basically developing spies within traditional catholic churches and christian churches and a more in a recent event of a friend of mine mark hauck uh who had the tradition of praying in front of a planned parenthood center with with one of his children for years uh, was uh, his child was being harassed uh, and his space was being violated by a, uh, if you call him a man and uh, Mark protected his son he was and he went through uh, an arrest and fortunately an acquittal and we want to talk with him about that because I think now more than more than ever uh, we are called upon to stand up and stand for uh, the Lord so I'm so stoked I got to visit with Mark Hoke Hauk uh, we were in uh, Indiana about two months ago at a men's conference there. Mark, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Oh, great to be back with you, Bear. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that, that would never happen again, right? The, you know, where a government would oppress Christians. That, that's back in the dark ages. Yeah, I, I, I've been telling everybody we're, we're living in uh, Nazi Germany in the 1930s. So it's, if people think that, you know, the government uh, don't see us as enemies, whether we're Pro-lifers, Christians, Catholics—they're um, just not paying attention. So that's what yeah, we're yeah. Well, well, you know, um, it's it's the government is a religion. Climate change is a religion. Um, a pro pro abortion is a religion, uh, and 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 the government is the uh, 
you know, is the citadel of that religion. And when you when you when you when you're atheistic, when you're godless, um, you tend to have to have some god, right? It's in man's nature, and we've made that they have made those sorts of things their god. And those Catholics who uh, have whose consciences have become reprobate, basically, they have to change who they think God is or what they think his teachings is so that their, their consciences aren't, don't bother them so much. Anyway, enough about me blathering. Mark, can you tell us that story? I think our, our listeners would really love to sure. go, go as deep as you want to, and, and, and especially I want to know about your son. How, how's he doing? Sure. Well, for those that don't know the story, it, it all began October 13th, the day the sun danced in Fatima. 2021, I was with my son uh, praying in front of Planned Parenthood, something we do every week, the weekly program for me to just go down there, spend about eight to 10 hours in front of an abortion mill and pray. Now, sometimes I take my son, sometimes I don't. But on this particular day, I did take my oldest son, Mark. He was 12 years old at the time. And as you said, uh, he was being badgered and harassed uh, incessantly. And I had to, um, you know, step in as we see we see the video of it what you're describing is is in is in video yeah it it is it was all caught captured on video in fact there's there's even more video that was destroyed by Planned Parenthood in advance of the trial so unfortunately that probably would have exonerated me but nonetheless uh the day involved me just shoving the man to get away from my son and uh, the local authorities wanted nothing to do with it the Philadelphia PD the DA, not not a big deal in the city of Philadelphia for a guy to get shot. But he when a man, that. but when a man gets that close, I don't know that he physically touched your son, but he was right there, like right in his. Oh, space. he was a foot away from my son. Right. Yeah. I think he I was I, a foot I away from my son and and continuing to harass him. Right. After repeated requests to stop, he he would not stop. So, again, my First Amendment rights became about dad's rights at this point, mm-hmm. and uh, and I did push him. Now, you know, he fell to the ground. Uh, that, that was it. I, di- I didn't. Nothing more came of it. Uh, we went. We did a holy hour for him. Came back. I gave my ID to the authorities and I said, "Here's my information. Here's my statement." And that was pretty much it. He put me in a private criminal complaint, which, which was uh, again not charges being pressed by the Philadelphia Police Department or the DA, but just a man putting another man in in the court proceeding. And and so um, it was dismissed. It was dismissed on April twenty second. Five days later, the Department of Injustice <laughs> serves me a uh, target letter. Uh, so they must have been watching the case. Now, you got to remember, uh, the Dobbs case hasn't leaked at this point. That's going to come in early May. Oh, the yeah, case, that's right. Yeah. The, in right. other words, you mean that the, the – explain the Dobbs case. I mean, most people I'm sure. sure know, but just – Right. So on June 24th, the Dobbs case overturned Roe v. Wade. Uh, Dobbs <laughs> Praise uh, God. is the name of the of Can you the believe you just we, said those words? Yeah, now Roe v. No, Wade was turned yeah, over. Isn't yeah, that amazing? But, but we've been working towards it, so thanks be to God. But anyhow, the the climate in the country was not like pro-lifers are going to be gay, be a targets at this point. Um, April twenty seventh was a target letter saying I'm a target of a grand jury investigation and, I, and that I might be indicted uh, for violations against the Face Act, federal access. Oh, excuse me, freedom of access to clinic entrances. You were across so the street, act. weren't you? Say that again. Were you across the street from the clinic or you were on the corner? Oh, I was 50 feet from the entrance. I there was you go. pretty much yeah. uh, at the corner of the, right. of the street. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, there was no and there was no women even involved, no abortion minded women or men even involved. It was just this uh, work, escort worker. You've and, dealt uh, with him in the past, haven't you? Haven't you? Hasn't he harassed you in the oh, past? I've, I've known him for 20 years. I've known the man for 20 years. So, you know, he's never done anything like this before. He's, he's a little aggressive, but like not like this so it was a it was a surprise to me that he would do that but it seemed intentional that said um he came after your son not you that's kind of a cowardly thing isn't it yeah i think he he knew it was agitating me so he he wanted to bait me there oh Um, okay uh, it's possible that he was set up to do that but thomas moore society was representing me at the time so my my attorney matt heffron contacted the assistant u.s attorney and said uh you have no case. My client's innocent. This is in end of April, 2022. My client's innocent. There's case law, even in your district against what you're doing, what you're trying to do. But should you want to indict him, no need to bring an agent out to his house. We will bring him in peacefully. So we wrote a letter. We communicated all this that no need to, to, to spend taxpayer money and send 20 agents or even five agents, which is normal, out to his house. 
uh, to arrest him in front of his family, scare his family. We'll bring him to you. Oh, and by the way, if you want to arrest him uh, or indict him, just pick him up every Wednesday. He's on the street corner in Philadelphia. No, you know what I mean? Praying, There's no yeah. reason to do that. Yeah, right. So Dobbs is leaked in May, and then June 24th, we have the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and then you have Joe Biden in Philadelphia at Independence Hall declaring that he's going to defend abortion rights, uh, and he wants to reinstate Roe. And then, uh, and then we see Miralago and uh, Maralago, whatever it's pronounced. And, well, let, uh, let, let's take a break here. Right? When, you're talking sure. about when, when the FBI agents just just in force show up with CNN camera rolling, cameras rolling, a staged arrest. But we got to take a break here. Uh, we're talking sure. with Mark Hauk. He's with the the Kingsmen. He's the founder of the Kingsmen, and just. I just love hanging out with him. I just love this guy. He's just a great, great guy to hang out with, a man of God and a, and a great father. And we'll, we'll talk more about this, this, this incredible story that I hope will inspire uh, men and women everywhere to rise up, to stand up, and stand for the Lord. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everyone to go to deepadventure.com, our website. There's a place there for the mama bears to sign up. And if you do that, the mama bears, you get access to all 34 episodes of Long Ride Home. 12 of those have not even been aired by EWTN yet. And you get access to, gosh, hundreds of our of our radio shows so, and, and, and 250, I think, of our, our Ocean Sunrise Catechism, where I spend 15 minutes in the mornings by the beach, teaching from the catechism. Like we go through the entire catechism line by line. You get access to all of those things. And uh, Mama Bears, you can actually, uh, there's a one-year curriculum on the virtues that you can have there. And if you want to, you can sign up as a family plan, Mama Bears, uh, especially you single women, uh, single moms. And there's a, there's a three-year curriculum that you can lead your son through on the, on, on, uh, the rules of manliness. 36 different monthly lessons that that are on video uh, are on audio are written have self-assessments so it's something that single moms can help uh their sons go through and you men of course you can join the man cave and the bear school of manliness it, we have a non-facebook community on our site and the men challenging and encourage each other and 
and uh, we have monthly Zoom meetups with everyone, and then we go through that curriculum together. So we're stoked about um, the, all the hard work and effort that we put into that. But speaking of men's ministries, we have Mark Hauk here. Hey, Mark, tell us, let's take a little moment, because I just talked about the man cave. Tell us about the king's men. And, and, and well, can we? Should we do that? or can we, Let's wait till the end of the segment. But we will get to talking about his, his men's ministry, the king's men. Let's go back now. You, you, you sure. offered to surrender yourself to the FBI or to have them arrest you there on the street corner by Planned Parenthood every, any, every sure. year there every week. Uh, and, and you were talking about what happened at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. So, you know, after the Dobbs case, I was just, I was just saying to your audience how pro-lifers were being picked up and indicted and, and arrested and FBI raids were happening to Joan Andrews Bell. Uh, of course, they raided President Trump's ho- home in, in Florida. They didn't just raid. They, they showed up with how many armed agents? Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's not like... I know it's not as many as I got, but there were... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, were, there were plenty there. But there were uh, but there were more reporters. <laughs> there were as many yeah. reporters as there were agents. Yeah. And he wasn't there either. So, um, yeah, there was a difference there. But nonetheless, this was the climate. So in August, my attorneys contact the assistant U.S. attorney and say... You know what's going on what's what what are you doing what's your plan here and uh they would not reply to to those requests so they reached out to me uh my attorney and said have you heard from the assistant u.s attorney i said no uh and they said okay well maybe there's no case here which of course we knew there wasn't yeah they 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 may walk away from it but they never tell you they're going to walk away from it so you just left in limbo right so fast forward to september 23rd it's 6 30 in the morning i'm up early and uh, we have co-op that day. I'm a homeschool dad, another threat to the to the state, being a homeschool family. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm up early. We're going to put a quiche in the oven. I got a quiche in the oven because real men eat quiche. They do. And, in uh, Pennsylvania, they do. In, in Pennsylvania <laughs> or whatever you call right. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, so it's it's dark out here, Bear. It's it, there's, it, I'm in the forest of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. There's You can't see anything. And so it's 630 and there's a heavy banging at my door with the doorbell ringing repeatedly. And so I, and then, then someone yells outside, open up. So of course, that's exactly how the FBI needs to present themselves when they come to someone's home. They they don't even announce who they are, but Merrick Garland and, and Director Ray would say that they did everything according If someone to did that to my house, I would get my gun and get ready to protect my family. You know, sure. you don't know who they are, if they have authority or, right. or whatever. What was your response? Well, you know what? I think I'm the only person in Bucks County who doesn't own a gun, although I love guns. Uh, I think they were expecting me to do that. In fact, with the amount oh, of armory that came to my house, yeah, yeah. I think that's what they were hoping for. And a lot of law enforcement were, have said to me, they wanted to shoot you that day. They wanted to have a reason to shoot you. So I went to the door, and since I can't see outside my door because it's a solid door, I said, who is it? And they said, bang, 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 heavy, banging again, ringing the doorbell. It's the FBI open up. So I said, okay, I'm right at the door. Stay calm. Uh, I have seven babies in here. Please stay calm. So I slowly opened the door, put my hands up so they would see my hands. Good, very well. And wise. I came out and I had five or six federal agents with M16s, heavily armored vests, SWAT gear on, ballistic helmets, ballistic shields, two battering rams, and about 10 to 15 marked and unmarked units on my property surrounding my house. 10 to 15 Uh, cars. So how many many would that be? How many people would be in those? I mean, with about two two state troopers or or agents in each car, that's about 20 to 25 people on my property. And the state troopers, the Pennsylvania state troopers, were pointing their pistols and long guns at me from their cars. So when I came out, this is what I see. My whole front property is covered with with police vehicles and there's people even at the back door so i don't even know how many were back there because my uh. daughter no, was too swat at the back door so i said what are you doing here and they said well you know why we're here now that's that's another thing that the fbi ne- does right when they when they arrest somebody they lead with the warrant it's at the end of their gun it's posted on the door it's the first thing they say we have a warrant for your arrest well they didn't say anything you know why we're here that's all that's all they said and i said oh no i, I well you're here because i rescue babies and then i looked at all of them because they didn't say anything. I said, you wouldn't be here if Donald Trump was in the White House. And they didn't say anything to that. So then my wife comes down and says, uh, and now at this point, the guns are in the threshold of the house. And they're pointing at my wife. And they're pointing at my seven children who are screaming on the steps. And my wife says, do you have a warrant for his arrest? 
And they said, well, we're taking him with or without a warrant. I mean, this is the mentality. What is that? This is their mentality. That we yeah. are going to take you by force when parents and fathers are, are taken out of their home in, in the middle of the night, dark o'clock. You know tyrannies are coming to this nation, right? Yeah. You know that a tyrannical government is a dictatorship is coming and scaring little children, waking them up out of their sleep. That's exactly what they did in the Soviet Union. In, it sounds in, like in, 1930s in Germany. Yeah, Germany, right? That's, yeah. that's exactly what they were doing. It sounds like they're so, Costeros. Exactly. So I recognize as a dad that this was not a good situation. My kids are, what do you want me to do? Uh, and, and essentially, they didn't produce a warrant until much later. But I, I said, you know, whatever you want me to do, you know, just protect. I, I got to protect my family. And they wouldn't let me put any clothes on, no socks, no shoes. I had flip-flops on, a T-shirt, like I was in Waikiki. But it was 30 degrees out. So um, they put me in the car very quickly, cuffed me in front of my children, and took me down to the federal building with my screaming children, begging them not to take me. So my kids have been traumatized. It's, it's total victimization of them. Uh, so we drive down to the federal building, which is 100 yards from uh, Independence Hall. It's about a two-hour drive. Isn't that ironic? Them. Yeah, yeah, isn't that ironic? It's about two hundred. It's about it's it's about a two hour drive down there. So I'm talking about homeschooling, and when I get down there, the driver there were two two. You're talking about drivers. homeschooling. You're, you're you're talking with the guys on the car. In yeah, the, the in, agents. I, w I wonder how many of those agents w wish they weren't there. I wonder if there were any uh, that, know, that wonder, regretted I it. I wonder myself. Yeah. Well, there were video cams that day from the dash cams. We found out that the state troopers had had dash cams running. Mm -hmm. And so some of the state troopers said, uh, this is not good. It's all, it's, it'll be released publicly soon. You but can hear it. You can hear good. it. Yeah. Um, we just made another enemy. We shouldn't be here. This yeah. is what the state troopers were saying to themselves. Yeah. Uh, there were no body cams on that day by the FBI, but we do have dash cams that said that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they said you have a beautiful home as we're driving down. You have a beautiful, you live in a beautiful area. You know, tell us about homeschool. You know, like they, they're recording everything, but I'm talking about homeschool. When I get down to the federal building, the agent says, it was a real pleasure meeting you. I couldn't believe he said that. But uh, I shook his hand and I said, well, it was a joy. And Well, then <laughs> what did they do after fingerprinting me? Yeah, They chained me to a table, badly shackled me, shackled my ankles and chained me to a table for six hours. I don't know why they would need to shackle me. I'm in their custody. I mean, but that's what they did. I think they wanted to just enrage me but you know what bear I, I was at the foot of calvary i was at the foot of the cross and i had so i had so much peace perfect did, peace. You, did you feel a sense of the holy spirit just giving you giving you peace huh i mean i think the prince of peace came out of my home our home is enthroned to the sacred heart of jesus and praise the lord i think that's why they stepped back they kind of almost didn't say anything because they didn't know what to say because they recognized that fear was uh knocking on the door and faith answered and they had no response so you know, what, there oh we are God. down in the in the in the. You got you got to you got to put that as, as part of your creed on your website. We can't forget that phrase. What did what did you just say? Yeah, fear knocked on the door, faith answered, and they had and there was no response. We got to take um, a break. We got to take a break here. I got. I'm writing this down. Fear knocked on the door, faith answered. Well said, Mark. That's a Holy Spirit. Uh, that's a Holy Spirit statement. We're talking with Mark Hauk. And his his uh, his uh, heroine, I guess, experience. Uh, I, I don't know what I would have done in that same situation, except for that the Lord said had promised us when they be uh, don't worry about what you will say when that time comes, because uh, the Holy Spirit Spirit will there to to speak through you. And and, and the rest of the story really uh, really shows that. We're talking with Mark Hauk. Mark, where can people find you the, yeah, at the Kingsmen? The Kingsmen dot org. The Kingsmen dot org. I strongly encourage men and women to go to that website find out more about mark and his ministry we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure this is daniel the boon markham with another episode of country up dreamers the british warrior lawrence of arabia once wrote all men dream but not equally those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day, they are dangerous men, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. Christian history is sprinkled with triumphant visionary dreamers of the day, like the Dr. Martin Luther King. Coretta Scott King wrote of her husband, 
If you give your life to a cause in which you believe, and if it is right and just, and if your life comes to an end as a result of this, then your life could not have been spent in a more redemptive way. I think that's what my husband has done. Now, Jesus, the ultimate dream maker, had a vision of the kingdom of God, which des described in the Sermon on the Mount. He saw it. He explained it in detail throughout the Gospels. He constantly talked about it. He lived it. He modeled it. He launched it into our darkened world. He willingly gave the ultimate sacrifice for it. Jesus didn't command us just to preach the gospel. He exhorted us to preach and live the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus has a hankering for you and me to catch his kingdom dream, a vision of how the world should be, as a prophet Amos wrote, where justice rolls like a river. Jesus is the architect, and we are his contractors. So grab your nail belt and get busy building. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome back. Our guest today is Mark Hauk. He's telling us his story about when his, his home was surrounded by over 20 armed FBI agents and, and state troopers arrested for protecting his son in front of, a, of, an, of an assault, a harassment in front of a Planned Parenthood building. And, and, um, and it's, we have him here because it's, it's a season, it's a time in our lives when, when more and more uh, are being, of us are being harassed like this and we need to stand up and stand for the Lord. Uh, it's time to be stand up and be counted. So, Mark, um, you were saying you, you were you were shackled in in in, in this room. And, and and by the way, did they have good Wi-Fi coverage there? Were you able to tune into ESPN while you were there or EWT? I had I had no I had no <laughs> cell phone. I had I had nothing but my rosary. They let me take praise my God, like, praise God. Yeah, they wouldn't let me get dressed, but they let me take my rosary. Your rosary and your flip flops. That's right. That's right. So, you know, we were we were at perfect peace there. We we had joy in the midst of the suffering. I didn't know when I was going to be returned to my family. They did not communicate that. Um, there was just me and the table and a white room, and I was just praying without ceasing. Was anybody in there, or are they just letting you stew for a while? No, no, they just nobody, just me. They left you in there just to stew for a while. Yeah. yeah, and I think they wanted me to get angry, um, but mm -hmm. I, I wasn't. I was at per. I had peace. I had. Did, I, did, I, I'm sorry. It, isn't it like almost like, Lord, you're giving me this opportunity to serve you like this? What a joy, you know. It was. You knew you know, it was God. It God, joy. Yeah. Yeah. When you suffer trials, right, and yeah. persecution. So, right. You know, look, Bear. If I wasn't in ministry for 20 years. I may not have had that response. You know, I have been preparing my whole life, I think, but but in the last 20 years in an intentional way to receive what was happening and and receive it and be open to the graces that would pour forth from it. 
And so they um, kind of picked on the wrong murder. guy. You, you, you had, God had been preparing you for this moment. They picked on the yeah. exact wrong person. <laughs> well, I, I, I just felt like old Uncle Mordecai saying to to Esther, for perhaps for such a time as this, this, God has called me and my family. And so grace was sufficient. And, you know, the old patriarch Joseph would say, you know, what man intended for evil, God intends for good. Amen. So I just yeah. saw good coming from it. Amen. Even, even if I ended up in prison, that Amen. good would come from it. Because Amen. All the saints uh, that suffered in the early church ended up in prison, it seems, were martyred or killed. So and, I said, and Mark, okay. And, there's and Mark, be you know prison. me, when we were together in Indiana and we're going rushing to the airport, I'm complaining because I got to walk out of the car to the airport in four, 35 degree temperature. That's my hardship. <laughs> <laughs> and you're here in a, you know, in a, in a FBI cell, not, not knowing what's going to happen next, but the grace of the Lord is there with you. Yeah. No, I, I, I just had the unification of my will, the unit of way, where my will and God's will were one. It's Amen. the first time it's ever happened wow. in my life. And, and you know what? I knew I was in his will. I knew God. that I had done nothing wrong, that my family was in God's will. And that he would protect us. Praise and God. And so, uh, you know, after six hours, they released me on my own recognizance. So what does that tell you? I was not a threat to the <laughs> they community. They didn't need to have guns. <laughs> or a violent offender, right? I right. wasn't a threat. No history. I wasn't yeah. a violent offender, and I wasn't a flight risk. So they knew that. So why, why the force? Why the armory that came to my home? That's the question, and that's what— They were trying to provoke you. They were, they, were, they were trying to provoke you. They were, they're trying to get yeah. a, a, a reaction from you that would that would be violent in some way, and then that would give them real valid charges. Yeah, I think you're right. And so, all right, so then at this point, they're going to release me. They're, they they have that preliminary hearing, uh, and, and then uh, I'm taken to U.S. Marshals, which was, okay, fine, uh, but, but why did you keep me in shackles? They, I had to shimmy down six flights of, uh, six flights to the basement of, of the building, with my shackles still on, my belly shackle, my ankle shackles. I mean, what, this is just to humiliate me. This, I'm being released. I'm an innocent man. I haven't been proven guilty in a court of law. I'm not a felon. But th I think they just wanted to scare, humiliate, intimidate, and send a message to pro-life America. So I go down the U.S. Oh, they market. did. They did yeah. do that. They, they, they woke up a lion. <laughs> well, I got down to U.S. Marshals, and uh, I was dehumanized by them. Because they do prison transfers and they treated me like a, a felon, um, and so that was you know humbling in itself. But nonetheless, we accepted all for the glory of God. And then we left. I was reunited with my family ten hours later. So we began that journey. Which well, well wait, this again. whole time, this ten hours, what were what what was uh, what was your wife doing with the children? What was that whole response? It was a co-op day. You know what? They could have stayed at home and and just lamented and cried and 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 stayed huddled in fear like in the upper room like the apostles but they went out and they went to go and be in community with the co-op community so they prayed and had the you know they they were with their normal routine which was school wonderful and then the whole community came and rallied around them and prayed with them your so wife they is got amazing the and your family community. yeah your yeah. wife that was very special i'm sorry go ahead no tell, tell us your yeah story. so i you know we go we come home and we begin the journey towards january 24th which was the trial date and i looked at it as the crucifixion date and um and we would and i felt like the lord told me you're going to walk the stations of the cross mm. and so i knew that i would journey my own personal via della rosa and that crucifixion would be the trial and so i began that journey with my wife and my children we got the best attorney we could find and Philadelphia, Brian McMonagall, and Thomas More Society was right behind us. Praise God! And uh, and we began that journey uh, towards the trial, and it was quite it was quite an experience. I don't know if you want me to get into that, but um, but it was it was a powerful, uh, moving experience. So much so that Ignatius Press is going to publish my journal. Uh, that That's I beautiful. Wrote thank you for throughout. thank yeah. you for keeping that journal. Yeah. Praise God Amen. for that. <laughs> it's important. We'll have, we'll I have wrote you it on to again. My children. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. And and so. Were you were you under house arrest or could you could you move about or? Oh well, yeah, I had some travel restrictions. I wasn't under house arrest. I had to travel within the Eastern District. Uh, but if I had to travel outside of the Eastern District, uh, they they they'd have to give me permission to do that. Mm -hmm. So I did do some of that. And were you restricted Although from I, going I, to? I lost to, some income. Were you restricted from going to Planned Parenthood? I was. I was restricted from going to and the that, specific it, Planned Parenthood that and, and, I that the incident occurred at. 
Mark, you just said something. You lost quite a bit of income because your your income, a lot of it is by speaking. So, mm -hmm. if people wanted to donate to your cause, how can they do that? Yeah, well, a lot of people did, and, and they still are. Praise the Lord! But uh, thekingsmen.org, there's a there's a family support page there for the legal fight, and there's also a donation to the ministry. So praise God. Go I'll be visiting it right after the show. <laughs> uh, so tell us more then. Can you continue your story? If you feel like that 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 time of writing that journal, tell us some of the elements of that. We got a couple minutes here before the next break. Sure. So I wrote it as if I was Thomas More in the Tower of London, right? Just writing to my children, Praise encouraging God. them, and uh, and just it just what I was experiencing, what their mom and dad were experiencing, what I was seeing in them, encouraging mm. them, building them up, but also reminding them that this is this is God's uh, gift to all of us, and that forgiveness. We, the, the main themes were gratitude and forgiveness. That was the main theme throughout the whole journal, which hopefully will be published soon. But Praise God. you know, it, it, it was it was trying. You know, the, the stations of the cross were very challenging, uh, and we made it all the way up to station ten before the trial began. Mm -hmm. So, in the midst of that, you know, there's great consolations in the midst of that bear. And there's mm -hmm. there's great suffering and a lot mm -hmm. of temptations, but the whole world reached out to us, mm -hmm. and we had the entire world praying for us, mm -hmm. including Mother Teresa's nuns in Calcutta as they prayed every morning over her crypt with our family picture over her crib. Praise God. So, wow. so we had a lot of love coming. One guy reached out to me uh, before we go to break. I'll share this. He said, uh, "You're I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lousy Catholic, he said. He emailed me. But seeing what's happening to you is making me come back to church. And I thought, wow. Praise God. You know what, man? Praise that God, makes God. me want to weep. That's so powerful. And, and, and it, it isn't it interesting. We're sharing in the cross of Christ through those times, participating in his suffering, I, and what a joy, what a privilege, what a privilege. Privilege. Um, we're talking with Mark Hauk. Mark Hauk, 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 Mark Hauk. How can people find you again? What's your website? Yeah, thekingsmen.org. They can find all the information there. We'll be back talking with Mark in a moment. I, I want to remind people that our own, uh, our, we, our YouTube channel is flourishing. Uh, the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. And on there, you can become a member there. And uh, you'll be notified as soon as we post new things. This this uh, this radio show is is uh, posted to YouTube, all the different podcasts too. But as soon as it's posted to YouTube, you're notified of that. And also, if you go to deepadventure.com and you join uh, and you subscribe to our little newsletter, every week on a Saturday morning, you get emailed to you some some pretty cool content. I think from our ministry. But uh, also, uh, um, Alana Gonzalez, by the way, she does that for us. She's wonderful. But um, uh, also, you get the video version of our radio show. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our website, deepadventure.com. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel.
you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with my friend Mark Hauk. We got to be with each other in St. Leon, Indiana a couple months ago and rode with each other to the airport. I just got a brief little update with him on what happened when over 20 armed FBI and Pennsylvania State Troopers uh, knocked on his door in the dark of the morning uh, and not a polite knock and basically drug him off uh, to, uh, to, uh, and arrested him for standing in front of the Planned Parenthood and defending his son. So we need to, uh, we got about eight minutes left. So you know what, what the high points are from here, especially the, the, the trial itself. But go ahead, I don't yeah, want sure. you to skip ahead. Let us, let us hear the, the story. Yeah, so we got to January 21st and I, I knew we would have to enter the deep, deep prayer. So mm. I called my pastor and I said, um, can we do a mass and can we have all night adoration in mm. advance of the trial? So it would be the 23rd into the 24th. And I was going to keep an all night vigil. And I'd done this before, before some pro-life work I did. And I said, you know, this is too important to not go into prayer. Jesus was in prayer all night and Holy Thursday. I said, let's do this. And my, my lawyer team said, uh, please don't do this. Uh, you need to be sharp. You need to be rested. I said, look, man, this is a spiritual battle. It's just as much a spiritual battle as it is legal. I said, I'll be sharp. I'll be ready. But I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for the jury. I'm going to be praying for the judge. I'm going to be praying for the prosecution. We're going into prayer. So we did. We kept an all-night vigil. On the 23rd into the 24th, we started with Mass. And I had about 50 to 100 people with me all through the night, which mm. was beautiful. Praise God. We left at 5.30 in the morning. We went down to the federal court building. We were there by 8. And I was energized. I was ready to go. And we began with the jury selection. And that was painful. Most of the jurors that were selected were supporters of Planned Parenthood. It didn't really reflect a jury of my peers. But the trial began the next day on the 25th. And uh, I knew I would be stripped of my garments. I would be nailed as the prosecution began. Now, you got to remember, the, the federal government has a 98% conviction rate there. They oh, don't my lose goodness. cases. Yeah. yeah. Now, I said to my attorneys, uh, are they going to come in with a plea prior to the trial? And they said, no, that's got to come from you. I said, well, I'm not going to ask for a plea. Well, on January 6th, of all dates, the government came in with a plea. No time, no fine, and no um, probation. Basically, a slap on the wrist, just plead guilty to count two, which is the assault charge. And essentially, it's a conviction for the government, and they're moving on to the next pro-lifer. I said, well, I'm not taking that. But I said, let me let me talk to my wife. So I go home, I talk to my wife, and she says, uh, well, you're not taking that because you're innocent, one. It's a cowardly deal. And uh, two, if you decide to take it, don't bother coming home. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so why was she so wishy-washy? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, man, she knew. Don't you she's, don't, uh, a wife like a that. What a special a wife. What a special wife. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have one and of those too. Said, yeah. Yeah. And she said, uh, we need to do this for the good of the pro life movement. We need case law. So, we need to right. risk being thrown into prison because it was worth it. It's a cause bigger than ourselves. Praise God. So, we're in day three of the trial after the prosecution pretty much nails me to the cross. Uh, I go on the stand and my son takes the stand. He goes before me and he does a phenomenal job. Wow. Thing. Yeah, my twelve my fourteen year old boy. He's on fourteen. The stand. The, wow. What, yeah, Mark when he, your your namesake, daddy. right? Yeah. What is yeah, Mark, right? Mark Jr. Yeah. And and then I went on the stand and I would pray for a spirit of confusion. And uh, you know what? The prosecution was all over the place. They really didn't have much to say and uh I, I, I didn't give him an inch and uh, we came off the stand. But they, they asked you. They, they asked you one really cool question. Um, uh, two questions, I think. It was, do you? Someone asked you anyway. Do you? Do you consider uh, them murderers or something to that effect? And you had a really beautiful response. What was that response? Yeah, they said do you. You think of them as baby killers and murderers. I said no, I don't. They said, well, what do you think of them? I said, I think of them as collaborators in the evil of abortion. And, and they said, well, then you believe that they're baby killers. I said, no. I said, they're sinners just like me. That's what I was said, so, that was so profound. That was yeah. so Holy Spirit. They're, they're sinners just like me. Yeah. That was beautiful. And I said, I'm there just for that. I'm there for them just as much as I'm there for the women. 
So, um, God. you know, I'm on the stand. I come off the stand. Now they're, the jury has the case. I'm resting in the arms of Mary and well, Jesus. They, but, they, but they showed you, they showed the images. And there was another question that they asked you. Um, did you go help the man when you pushed him and he fell down? You didn't push him down. He, you, he's the uncoordinated man who was pushed. You pushed him high in his center of gravity and sure. he stumbled back and fell. If, if they had asked me that question, I would have said, you, what was your answer? What was your response to that? I thought it was I so said, powerful. no, I, I, I did not. Uh, they said, did, did you apologize for pushing him? I said, no. They said, uh, did you help him up? I said, mm, unfortunately, no. I said, but I did go and I did a holy hour for him. <laughs> but you also, I think, uh, I, I think you said something effective. I went and helped my son. I mean, that, that's well, the said, right son, response. That's what yeah, you were doing. Yeah, my son and I left. My yeah. son and I left. I got him out of there. I got him to safety. I didn't want yeah. him to be Yeah, and you did a holy hour anymore. for him. And we well, you left. Know, yeah, but that, that's a lesson to us. When someone offends us, it's a God-given appointment for us to pray for them. And when someone offends us, that's God saying, pray for that person. That's what, yeah. you know, bless those that curse you. Yeah, so we did pray. And you know what? I didn't see Bruce much after that. I said goodbye to him later that day. But um, nonetheless, uh, the jury gets the, the case. And they're deadlocked there on Friday uh, of the 27th, the day I met my wife 16 years prior. Wow. Uh, and I met her at a pro-life prayer vigil. So these things weren't lost on me. So um, they went to they went to the weekend. And um, so I was in the tomb for three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That is interesting. 14. God. Yeah. And then we emerge uh, from the tomb on Monday. We come out and the jury's there and they have a problem. They're passing all these notes to the judge. And they said, there's a man in here who's intimidating people. He won't deliberate. And so they had to kick a guy off the jury at the 11th hour, which mm. was amazing. It, that's mm. never done. And so we didn't know if it was for us or against us. We didn't know. So they bring in the alternate, and we had to wait at 3 o'clock, divine mercy hour. Praise after God. less than an hour deliberating, yeah. Yeah. they render a not guilty verdict uh, uh, on January 30th. And the judge told me I was free to go. And uh, I rejoiced in that, of course, and he and I thanked the judge, and he said, "No, Mr. Hauk, thank you." I think the judge knew that this would be a very important case. Tell us, uh, Mark. We have just a few minutes left. Speak sure. to our, our our listeners. What is the Lord saying to us in this hour? Yeah, you, you know, the Lord's been speaking a lot to me in this hour, and and it's it's our finest hour. I mean, look, saints are being raised up. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're attacked and persecuted, again, consider it pure joy, J Book of James. So when we're attacked and persecuted, we know that the church is going gonna, is gonna to be pruned and it's going to grow. And so we know that you know we are part of this, and we have to say yes to that white martyrdom every day, every day as fathers, as husbands, as mothers, as, as wives and, and lay people in the church. We have to say yes to these invitations that are— that are grace. Everything's a sacrament. Everything's grace. And so in the midst of this great persecution, I felt that every all of it was pure grace. And um, it drew me closer to my Lord. It's drawing my kids closer to my Lord. And so at this hour, like, you know, I just say, and people say, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I said, well, don't be, because it was a real blessing. You know, um, and also, you know, we we don't wait for these things to happen. The reason why that that this season in your life happened was because you were in the battle. You were on the corner of the Planned Parenthood building. And so I just encourage people. I was ta interviewing Father ba Basil Cole the other day, and he I, I've used in the past the statement, you know, that the Holy Spirit will give you a nudge and, and move on that nudge and test to see if it's the Lord's will. Maybe God wants you to teach catechism. Maybe he wants to homeschool your kids. Maybe he wants you to run for city council. Um, you know, maybe the Lord wants you to talk to that person that you see every morning when you go get your coffee. Maybe there's some a word that you have for him. And he used the word shove <laughs> a little bit more than a nudge. Well, during this time, um, don't just wait for something to happen. Make something happen. Maybe it's to join uh, Mark Houck's, uh, um The King's Men. Mark, tell us about your ministry. Just We've got another minute, less than that. Sure. Tell, yeah. yeah, real quick. Uh, you know, we started 20 years ago, and it's just as— uh, at, its, at its origin, its heart is a is a small men's group. So we have small men's groups around the country, uh, and we have retreat offerings that supplement the, those men's Incredible groups. retreats. Yeah. yeah. I haven't got yeah, to be on get, one yet, but yeah. We've got to get you on one of those. But a great adventure type retreats like like yours. And mm -hmm. um, and then we do healing for healing work for men that, you know, really need some beautiful, healing. beautiful, Mark. So beautiful. Uh, we do that and we continue to build partners around the world and in our country and 
you know, but there's more information at thekingsmen.org. Oh, and that's all? That's all you do? Yeah, no, <laughs> just no, that's not all I do. <laughs> well, what do no, you do? Look, man, what there's do so you much do? work to be done in the vineyard. <laughs> yes, man, yeah. we need men. I love it when I meet a man like your other men. Step up to the front of the battle line. Step up with us. Uh, you know, if God can use knuckle draggers like Mark and I, He can certainly use you. He's more. He's the. He's the guy. He uses those who are willing, and He'll perfect you along the way. Believe me, you'll be humbled. You'll be challenged, but step forward. Uh, go to Mark's website. King the Kingsman is it the Kingsman dot org or is Kingsman yeah the Kingsman dot org or or go to deepadventure dot com and 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 we will uh, believe me just 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 uh, give us a hint that you're interested in, in, in stepping in and we will be right there with you to to encourage you thank you Mark God bless you God bless your beautiful bride and your and your wonderful children tell them Uncle Bear says aloha I will tell them <laughs> and tell your audience to pray for May sixteenth I'll be testifying before Congress praise God yeah you just said those words. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be testifying. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Ooh.